Hi everyone, I'm Lisa Walton and welcome to Artist Stories. Today I'm talking to Lucy Stronkova, who's in the Czech Republic. It's the first time I've ever spoken to anybody in the Czech Republic and Lucy does amazing work and I'm really thrilled to have her on, on the program today. So welcome Lucy. Hello, thank you so much for having me. My pleasure. As I said, Lucy is in the Czech Republic and has been working in polymer clay since she was 12 years old, which unbelievably is only 10 years. She's done an amazing amount of things in that time and runs her own business. I love these chocolate looking things, but they're not chocolate, are they? No, they are. They are from polymer clay, actually. And I got inspired by pastry. And this is something food thing is my huge inspiration. <laughs> So in this case, this is a polymer clay praline inspired by Belgium chocolate. Yum. So it's made completely from polymer clay. They look delicious. We're going to be talking about polymer clay today. And this is a selection. So these are some of the brands. Do you have preferences or do you, do you use them all? Actually, I don't have any favorite brand. I usually mix Fimo and Primo together. I really like Primo. Mm -hmm. but I'm just working with what I have on my table or in my shelves. Sometimes I was more focusing on Gato clay and right now it's Primo and Fimo together. So I usually mix them and try what they can do together. Right, <laughs> right. There's coming more and more brands, aren't there? Yeah, they are always something new coming to the market, but I think people are truly devoted to standard things and FIMO is always the one who is most popular across Europe and then Primo in USA and for those who are working with polymer clay for years they may switch to Kato. Sometimes you are working on some kind of project and you need an exact kind of clay so for example if I would have to choose a transparent clay I would go for Pardo but it really depends on the thing you are going to create from the polymer clay. Okay, because some are softer than others, aren't they? Yeah, the yeah. consistency is different, the colors are different, the characteristic things and the way that the clay actually is molding in your hands or the look after baking, everything is changing a little bit. But I think that as a beginner, you would not see any differences. And when working with the clay for years, you are really focusing on little things and details so then you are more demanding and trying to figure out the best brand for the exa project now you are also a photographer yeah i'm working as a photographer but i don't promote it anywhere <laughs> so it's just like my not a side job it's more like a hobby okay and time after time i get some people asking me if i can take photo of them with their baby or with their <laughs> dog or <laughs> animals so I do that just for fun and the idea behind that is that when I started with polymer clay and then when we started the family business I actually had to work with tools and editing softwares and camera so I have to learn everything by myself right and from that then just I got more and more offers from others so we actually have been working for more companies and cafes and restaurants and others. Oh. So next to the polymer clay job, there is a little bit, a little media company with me and my sister and people around. And we are just helping others with social media and visual identity and online presentation. I just mentioned that because all your photos are really beautiful. They definitely yeah, have that professional, professional look to them. So this is one of your pieces and I watched the video of how you make this and it was just fascinating. Mm -hmm. So would you like to tell us a little bit about this project? I put there because this is my favorite piece that I made years ago. I'm always thinking about what my style actually is. And for artists, it's actually for everyone, it's really difficult to figure out what our voice is and what we would like to tell through art. Mm -hmm. So in this case, I had some very funky, cheerful years because I was really figuring out how to work with polymer clay in color and fancy shapes like this one. So I don't know, it's actually, it's evolving. And 
right now past years i'm more minimalistic person if i could i would do everything in black and white and mm -hmm. no other color added <laughs> but i really understand the market and i'm very much aware that there is a difference in the community which is actually a pity because if you would create something full of rainbow colors you will get probably more attention than working only with a white clay mm -hmm. so i think that it's really important to figure out who is your audience in the moment and for who you are working because i know that some tutorials and some projects need to be colorful so more people can get familiar with them and can be amused by that but i'm very much aware that i am somebody else in the moment and i'm very happy to create minimalistic jewelry just for myself and my own projects so this is actually something that i have been thinking about for many years and i don't know like it's just it has something to do with psychology of colors and social media itself it just catches your attention yeah so that's just my idea how to think about it okay so now this is for me I would yeah say. okay is this current work i actually created that for australia yeah. when i was teaching there two years ago i had to develop a project and this is also inspired by chocolate so, <laughs> so. i don't mind because, if it's chocolate i think that's a great thing to be yeah. inspired by when you look at instagram you will probably see many pottery stuff and chocolate and tree <laughs> and i follow many designers in those two and they are actually so amazing and they are thinking about the mother very differently so what i do very often is that i get inspired by something some kind of shape and then i try to figure out how to create that from clay so in this case everything is made from polymer clay even those tiny details those little stripes with dots this is oh, actually really? also made from clay so that was the idea behind this collection and i made hundreds of tubes and then finished it only like 10 or 20 pieces of jewelry and i like the idea that it's very gentle it's not for everyday wearing or you need to be very careful about that yeah but it's something that is at least i hope crossing some kind of limits what you can actually do with clay which is very often my goal to come up with something new so you try to create trends rather than follow them yeah i try but i'm not saying i'm good at that but i guess that's the only way how you can create yeah i'm at the position that i would never be i i cannot copy anyone else because at least i don't think so i would be able to do that because even though when I was attending some other classes with other teachers when I was younger, I always come up with something different. So I don't like going step by step by someone else. Mm -hmm. But I also think that I'm very much aware of my position in the community and I cannot create something what everybody else next to me is creating because it's just it, it would not fit me and I would not be happy about that right. at least. So that's what I'm trying to do when I'm sleeping, just thinking about things and the possibilities and figuring out what is seen and possible to create. And here are some more examples of very yeah. unique and original jewelry. This is like a necklace created from imitation of pebbles from yes. clay. And then there we see an organic brujit. And the third picture is I created that from brass and an imitation from of wood made from clay. Mm -hmm. So I attended a class for a week at the local university and we had a good time learning about all those stuff with metal, which is such a hard job that I would love to do that all the time, but it's really, it takes a lot of time. Yes. So this was just this is something I would really love to do, but the equipment and everything you need for creating such kind of jewelry, it's a little bit bigger than having just your machine and hundreds of boxes that I have around. around <laughs> yeah. I started off doing metal jewelry and there is a lot of equipment and you have to, yeah. it does take a long time to do anything. So I stopped doing that, but it was quite interesting because a lot of the tools 
when I started working with polymer clay, it was like, oh, I've got drills. Oh, I've got this. I've got that. Yeah. <laughs> it was good. That's helpful. Yeah, yeah. very helpful. But no, they're very interesting pieces. And here we have Same. some more chocolates. And this is probably, it shows you very well how evolving in my mind and in my style, because I feel like the less is more. So I'm really happy about adding one color things into jewelries to make sure that you can focus on just one piece and those around are more like additives that create a complete jewelry or something yeah so in this case this is not the final jewelry but you can see that there is the main pebble with the graphic decoration on the top which is also made from clay and the rest is more like one color or texture it's just more of simplicity okay. so that's something i really like i've never seen such fine lines in polymer clay i'm very impressed with those <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it must be quite tricky to, to make. Actually, it's not. Actually, it's the opposite. <laughs> and what I'm doing very often is combining more materials and thinking about what can be inside of polymer clay, what can be created together and combined. So it still looks like a polymer clay, but actually it gets help from some kind of other material together. So what's happening here? This is actually a photo from Polymer Week we had in 2017. So this was a very first event we organized. And it's the start of everything because before that, I was actually a Lucy from Lucy Clay Tools. And I attended many classes around Europe. So I visited many different events when I had a chance to actually be an attendee. So I figure out what I miss and what I really like. And during Polymer Week events, I try to make my best because they are actually very stressful and having 100 people around the world coming to your city. It's, it's actually amazing, but the organization behind and communicating with everyone is sometimes very overwhelming. I was around 18 or 19 and we organized the very first event here in Pilsen where is the city I live yep. and then every other year we did another event and we stopped before COVID actually so we got lucky because the third year I was very tired at the end of the event and I was like okay let's take a break and the other year everything happened so I was really happy that we didn't start organizing anything because I cannot imagine paying for all those flights for teachers and organizing stuff and then canceling everything <laughs> a few <laughs> days before. So yeah. I was really happy that we decided this way. Good, good. So yeah, it yeah. So sounds an amazing event though. Yeah, it's very, it's just amazing to have many teachers and attendees from different parts of the world. Yeah. And what I really like about it is that actually it doesn't matter what religion you are, what language you are speaking, how do you look like. It's just everyone is sharing the one and only passion, which is polymer clay, and that's all that matters. So that's really, it's nice to think about it in this way. And also, I think that people in the community miss that because online meeting is nice because it's really easier to meet with anyone thanks to Zoom and other. But face-to-face -face and sharing experience is totally different. So I do hope that in next years, we will be able to come back to this. Yes. <laughs> Let's hope. Yeah. I hope so too. Now we're going to be talking about Polymer Week magazine, which is your best. When we organized the very first Polymer Week event, I figured out that it would be very cool to surprise everyone with a magazine. So we did the first issue. It was just like to try how people would like that. So with the first event, we published the first issue. And then because it was successful and people wanted more and more, we continued. So it's been four years right now publishing the Polymer Week magazine that kind of connects people from different parts of the world working with polymer clay differently. So I really like about that, that it shows you what are the possibilities of this material. 
and it's really nice example that you can give to someone who doesn't believe in polymer clay itself because you have many people around i think everybody has that feel like that it's a piece of plastic or a material for kids and they don't really get it yeah. and they don't think that it's a material very suitable for artists so this project is doing the opposite it's proving to others that there are hundreds of possibilities and we can call that art and not just plastic hobby yeah. craft makers or something how many issues do you put out a year it's always different we started okay. with four yeah. and then we did three and this year we have only two the reason behind that is that I had to finish my university this year. We are doing that in four or five people together. But if I'm not in charge of everything and when I'm not having enough time, nothing is actually happening. So I do hope that next year we will go back to three or maybe four, we will see. But I think three is enough for having enough time between them. Mm -hmm. And actually, I'm very much aware that the shipping is going higher and higher, which I'm very sorry about, but I cannot yeah. do anything about that. And with COVID, actually, everything is increasing the price. Would so you... we have an online version, but I really like the paper. It's something that you can hold in your hands and have fun and just read and it's physical and it feels like that you created something what actually exists. Yeah, I noticed in the right hand photo is some very mm -hmm. impressive looking machinery. Was that a big learning curve for you to learn how to publish a magazine? This photo is taken in the printers in this town and I, I think every project is teaching you something. So in this case it has been so many things from communicating with people from different parts of the world to figuring out the graphic design and the language itself and translation and then thinking about papers and possibilities of printing and at the end you have to figure out how to sell something and take photos and videos so there are a bunch of things that I had to learn and I'm still learning and I'm really happy about it because it's not like it doesn't end with having a print magazine in your hands it's a nice adventure to go through and it's very different all the time even though we are going to publish our 15th issue it's still very different and there is always something new that I have to figure it out so mm -hmm. it makes it more funny to create that. So you started this when you were 19? Yeah I guess so I, I'm not actually quite sure but around that age in 2017. When I think of what yeah. I was doing when I was 19 and what you, you have achieved, it's um, quite astounding. Here's one of your beautiful necklaces, which I know was featured in one of the issues. Yeah, it's actually one of my latest pieces that I have created. The funny thing is that I feel like the more I work with the clay, the slower I am. Because when I started, I was able to produce tons of things every month. Mm -hmm. right now it's more the end I have to figure out the idea in my mind firstly and then I spent weeks of trying and creating the final piece so in this case it took me like three weeks and I thought that I will be done in four days so <laughs> I always realized that sometimes I think about it in a bad way so I made a tutorial for this cycle that is published in this magazine issue mm -hmm. and I actually really like to do that because I like to thinking about the construction itself. And for me, it's not only about the pattern or the shape, but it's all things connected together. And every aspect of that is very important. And that's why it takes so much time because you really think about everything. So in this case, it's magnetic claps that you have for opening the necklace, then the construction of the necklace, those strings that they are connected together with those pebbles. If you have to think about varnish or resin or some other things that you would like to connect with the clay and the shape. So it's pretty fascinating process to mm -hmm. go through. Are you making work now so you can publish it or are you making it to sell or what's your primary goal? I'm not working for selling my stuff. Mm -hmm. Because I am very much aware that it would not work. I would have to create 
hundreds of them to make a living by selling jewelry. Yeah. And I chose the opposite. If it's not published in the magazine and in my career, I created a few online tutorials or eBooks that helped me a lot in the beginning. And I figured out or realized that if you create a tutorial, it's much better for you to sell simple tutorials that may consist from hundreds of pictures and a lot of text and a lot of pages. And it's a lot of work, but you can sell them very easily and you can sell them, you can sell more of them mm. instead of selling the one piece of jewelry. So I'm more happy to share my knowledge in any possible way mm -hmm. instead of selling my jewelry for someone who would like to wear that. So this is your book? This is not actually my book, but I, uh, at some point I felt like we have to figure out some new project, a new book, and we connected 27 artists from the world. And each of them has a tutorial inside, an article about them and a gallery of their polymer clay artwork. Mm -hmm. So we named that a new generation of polymer clay because I felt in the polymer clay community, we have been having like 10 to 20 very popular makers or artists that definitely changed the world of polymer clay. But I felt like that we need to celebrate the younger generation at some point or those new people who came to the Polymer Clay community and created their own stuff in their own design with something new and fresh inside. So that was the main goal behind that, to create a publication that would present what's new in this industry. It's a very minimalistic cover. Yeah, <laughs> it is. <laughs> it is very minimalistic and inside it's actually the opposite. It's full of pictures and <laughs> there are hundreds of polymer clay wonderful items that you can be inspired by and wonder step-by-step -step tutorials wow. that I'm really thankful that all those wonderful artists were happy to share their knowledge because that's not a very common thing. Mm -hmm. And you may see many teachers that are more hiding their know-how, which is okay for them. But it's really hard to find those who are happy to share their mm. ideas. And I feel like that this is very important because you want the polymer clay community and others going like to a different level. And you can do that only together by sharing your knowledge and ideas and tutorials. Yep. So I feel like that when you find a balance between those two things, it's very good because it's not only about giving everything away for free or even get paid for that, but you can keep something for yourself and still share something what you have on your table. So that's actually what I have been doing. I always am in the middle of that. And I think it works very well together. Okay. The book, is that available um, like Amazon or is it only available through you or how do people buy this book? We have a few distributors who are having like online stores about polymer clay. So in Australia, it's two words and in France and in Japan and some other countries, but we are mainly selling over or, or via our online store, which is dot .com. And for us, this has been the best way because actually in printing and it, with every product that you are going to print, it's very hard to figure out the prices to make everyone happy. So when you are having retailers or someone who is distributing your products it would always increase the price of that and i think it's already enough especially with the shipping mm. and with heavy stuff which the book is actually quite heavy it can get quite pricey so that's my idea behind it and if i would be on the other side i would be very happy to support someone who is the actual publisher or maker or the owner of something instead of buying from retailers or someone who is just distributing Yes, those things. All of Lucy's links are down below in the description box. So um, you. you'll be able to have a look at these beautiful things, including these. I love this photo. I just yeah. <laughs> think 
It's just a beautiful photo. These are your texture stamps, which are very mm -hmm. popular at the moment, aren't they? I hope they are. Some of them are already sold out. Great. And it's funny when you see the whole process of designing something like that, because right now you see a beautiful pictures of 12 very, I would say, inspirational or really fancy texture stamps. Yep. But what I see is the process behind and the exact moment when I was taking those pictures in the living room <laughs> and it was kind of hard and everything was falling down on me. So the reality is always quite different, I would of course. say, of course. than what we see. And it's really nice to keep that in mind. Yeah. But in this case, I was trying to figure it out. That's actually something I really love to do. It's just like the product designing and producing and making. So it's about figuring out what you need in the polymer clay, then asking other factories what are those possibilities. And then putting together everything from the product itself, the packaging, to tutorials, to photos. And there are many stages together. Then you have to figure out some videos and promoting that. And I really like doing all of that. Even the process is a little bit long. Yeah. And not many people are aware of that, but that's okay. It's just, that's the difference of that being on this side. Do you have a local manufacturer? It depends on the product. This is actually created in United Kingdom because there is a very nice company that is available for producing textures that are created from a very interesting kind of plastic. Mm -hmm. But they're actually transparent from some kind of silicon that you can nicely wash and clean and everything stays perfect for a very long time. I would say you can use it for years. And other stuff are usually made in Czech Republic. So the printing and the packaging and everything. We are talking about this product, but everything else is mostly created in Czech Republic. The printing, the packaging, the boxes, everything. Because you may find some company in China and calculate that it's really cheap and that you can get it quite faster here. But then when you put it all together and all those prices and taxes, it's actually very same, I would say. Yeah. I really like coming to those factories and asking about everything. So for example, about printing, I'm going to the printing company and talk with the printer and ask about what we can do and what we can change. And you cannot do that when you find some no name company in China just oh, because they are cheaper. So I like the process and the people behind and around that. Yeah. So that's what I prefer to create everything actually in our town or in the Czech Republic. So many different aspects of production that you've had to yeah. go through. But I guess you, you were experienced in that earlier anyway with the Lucy Clay product. I would not say that because before when I was a part of Lucy Clay tools, we were always three. There was my dad, my, his friend and me. And I was more like working as someone who would say what we need and how it should look like and what it should do in the way of polymer clay. So I was working as a user of polymer clay, okay. testing and telling everything how it works and if it's good, because it's made definitely just for polymer clay. Mm -hmm. And my dad was more, or he is behind the business stuff. And his friend was about working on the construction and the design, and then we put it all together. So it was a team job, but right now I'm more like alone on many of those aspects and things, which is okay for me because I really like creating these things by myself, but it's definitely different than before. And what is also different is that I'm now my own boss, so I can really <laughs> say what I like and what I do not like and create those things. So I really, I, I'm just sure that they are from me and they are actually my dream products that I created firstly for myself. It is, I, I want to stay humble, but I create that in the best way. So I'm happy because then I know that others are going to be happy mm -hmm. and I'm very perfectionist and I would not let any detail to stay in that or any mistake it just needs to be perfect so I can really say happily and 
that these are my products that I can recommend to others. This is a silk screen. Actually, I have been designing my own silk screen for some time and they are actually being made right now and should be available in a week. And that's something what I really like to create. I'm very much aware that in the polymer clay community, there are many makers who are creating and designing their own silk screens. But what I'm trying to do is to look at that differently. And I think you will see that when the packaging and everything will be out. So it's not just about the template or the silk screen, mm -hmm. but it's about every other aspect we have been talking about. So this is like a new project that has been on my table for some time. These are actually polymer clay with those designs. So it's really cool to me to see all those possibilities that you can create with a regular silk screen template. So I had an online class a few days ago and it was really amazing to just to show people what they can create because I feel like that actually with Instagram and Reels and TikTok and all of those platforms, all we can see is very simple things that are definitely okay, but something is missing there. And I feel like that people are not going more into deeper thinking what they can actually create. And instead of that, they are more following trends and videos that may have thousands of viewers and that is okay. But sometimes I feel like that I should share something a little bit more deeper so others can realize that they can create different things. These are the magazines. So this is all of them? Yeah, this is all of them. These are 14 magazines that we have published during those four years. Okay, so this what's this about? This is actually an online project that already has been a year since we, we started that. And the idea behind that is to connect a little bit more people from different parts of the art. So we are mostly focusing on polymer clay, but there are also other artists from different fields and designers who are sharing their passion and ideas through tutorials or interviews and articles and videos. And it's an online membership platform for those who don't have enough and would like to get more and more. And we are publishing usually two, three times a week, high quality content with collaboration with other artists from very different parts of the world. Mm -hmm. So it's really nice to connect more people in the online form because the magazine, when you look at the magazine, you may realize that there is some kind of certain level of artists that we present. And sometimes what can happen is, for example, that someone has not a good camera for taking good pictures that would be possible to print, or they might have be other issues. So next to having an online membership platform, for me, it's also a way to present those who feel like they would share something and it's really high quality content, but something may be missing. So for example, it can be a very perfect photo for printing, which has some standards that you have to achieve, otherwise it can be printed and others. So I really like the idea that this is a different platform that is not physical, it's just an online, but it shares a different way and different kinds of content as the video is, for example. So someone who is really comfortable with speaking on the camera is happy to share a video and someone who is not is happy to be in the magazine behind images okay. and that's a monthly membership it's a monthly membership and what we figured out a few months ago is that once a week we also have some teacher who is providing an online class and we figured out a nice way that those who are not a part of the society can also attend all money will be donated to an organization in nepal who is helping women in need and it's a nice way for me and also for others how to support someone who actually needs that so 
time after time, we also do these things that are truly important. And this is one of the tutorials from the membership? Yeah. This is actually my tutorial that I created a few weeks ago. And this is just an example how it looks like. You have a project and then you have several steps, usually about 20 or 30 pictures step by step with a photo and description. So you can go through them and you can create it by yourself. I have created a tons of tutorials during those years. I have been working with polymer clay and I feel like that it's such a nice way of sharing the knowledge because it's not about the project itself. It's about those steps and tiny details and tips and tricks. And what I really like is that even those who, for example, would not like this kind of style, can go through the tutorial and find something that is really interesting for them. So I often get that feedback that, for example, they really like the way I created the backside of the brush or they got inspired by the way I created a template or something. So I think it's about details and that's what's really important about sharing the knowledge. It's I'm not afraid that someone would go and copy the world jewelry and sell that. And actually, if he would, I'm, I'm sure that it would look a little bit different than mine. Yep. But I'm really happy to share the knowledge and let's say at least a little bit help to those who would like to learn more. That's just all behind that. Right. And who's this? This is actually my life in three pictures because I'm often thinking about how we as a society are just focusing on the things and projects that we but we are not that much aware of personal lives so for example the reason that they have been only two issues of the magazine and not three was because of i had to do the university stuff and others and i think it's really important to say that even though you may see someone on the instagram looking very nice and having own company and being busy by doing what we truly like or love, the reality can be a little bit different. And I think it's really important to keep that in mind that it's not about photos and pictures that we share, but it's about what is happening behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. This is my little brother. We spent a lot of time together creating and playing. And the second picture is my cabin. So I'm very often outside in the cabin or just walking around and gardening and doing these kind of stuff which is really funny because I don't know much people in my age do the garden. I have been working on my book for years and the problem is that it never has been a priority because you have always something more important in the moment which is the magazine, the company itself, the media and others and this is something that I would love to finish next year and I do hope that I'm going to do that. And this is just an example of how I think and create stuff because the book is obviously about polymer clay. Those who are in the community know very well that many books have been published in about this material. And what I'm trying to do is think about it differently. And when creating some kind of tutorials and stuff and projects you really never know who is on the other side so you are not sure if it's going to be a beginner or someone who is more advanced and my way of thinking is that for example having an article as a part of the book about polymer clay can be for someone something they they already know and for others it can be very full of new information and for those who already know that there is a second part, which is the visual identity. And in this case, it's just a regular picture of a polymer clay, but the form of that is completely different that we are used to see. And my idea is that those others who are very much aware of this material will be like in all just with the pictures. <laughs> so I'm thinking about it, that there is going to be something for everyone. And that's just my way of creating and thinking. And also the reason why everything 
takes so much time because just this picture took me, I don't know how much time, but the mixing of colors and packing them and creating the composition and then the picture and then the editing in Photoshop was many hours. But I feel like that's, it's interesting way how to create something for many people. What did you study at university? At the university, I actually studied teaching of art. Mm -hmm. And at some point it was a nightmare because I think what we read in the books and what those teachers at the academy are like is very different from the present time that we live in right now. You just have to keep going because when I, I was studying, I have been disagreeing with many things. And some of them were really good to know about and inspiring, but I was really happy to be out of the school. I, I'm not sure about other universities in different countries, but actually in Czech Republic, it's about writing stuff that nobody reads because you have to write many essays and things that not many people actually care about. That Then it's about remembering stuff that you are going to forget in a week after having an exam. And then when you are going through those three years like that, you have to do those final exams and then you have to learn everything again because you already forgot everything. And then you are going through final exams and then you are free to go to the world. So I felt like that instead of creating something that I have been in love to do for years, I have to keep all those Paul Markley stuff and things I truly love next to me and focus on writing something that nobody really cares about and that felt very strange obviously I have learned many things during the school but it was just so much time that I was actually really aware of what I could create during those years instead of being at the university in my case which is really sad to say that it was just about having a piece of paper in my hands and many people do that the same way and the pressure of families and the society itself is really high. I felt like I can quit very often and I really want it, but the pressure from others were not really easy to go through. And I felt like it's really easier to finish that and make others happy, which is obviously a bad way to do things. And now you were free. No, I'm free. So many things happened during this year and now having my own studio and doing just what I truly love is it's like a dream come true but it doesn't mean it's easy because now I'm the boss of mine and I have to really make sure that things are getting done and sometimes I have those days as everyone where I would just watch some movies and do nothing and sometimes I cannot do that because there are people who need something from me so it's fun fascinating i very very much enjoyed your story <laughs> and everything you've achieved you. and i look forward to seeing what you achieve next but i have to say that not many people actually realize that that i'm not alone behind my things and i always have been having a help around so in the first years it was obviously my parents and my dad and even though we went separate ways, it doesn't mean that it, it just made me who I am. And I'm very much thankful for that, for everything that happened in my life. So there are many people around and I would never be able to do that alone because you still need people in your team who are going to be behind things that you don't have to be a part of, which is like accounting, making invoices and packing yeah. orders and things like that and if I would do everything by myself I would never be able to create so many things and those important I would say that are visible for example on social media and others so I'm definitely not by myself and it's a job of many people behind mm -hmm. and it's really important to mention that because I feel like sometimes people think that I'm like superwoman doing all those stuff but it's not actually true and when you are having a business like that you need people around otherwise you would be very slow doing anything or you'd go mad 
yeah, you go back. <laughs> or super tired than others. So um, I'm just very thankful to having wonderful people around, which are not very visible that often as I am. Some of them are really happy to be invisible because they don't like the attention. Yep. And some of them I try to mention when I can because it's important to know to people know that. It's been absolutely lovely talking to you Thank and you. hearing everything. And I just hope that other people are inspired as much as I've been inspired by you and your work. And if you've enjoyed this video, I hope you'll consider subscribing to my channel and doing the thumbs up. And that way I will continue bringing you fascinating people like Lucy. And so I want to thank you so much for your time today. And we will see what happens next in your yeah. interesting life. So thanks, Lucy. Thank you so much. Thank you too for having me. I really appreciate that. And I'm very happy to be a part of your project. Thank you. Thanks everyone for watching and bye for now. Bye.